truth be told, this is something that I've said before, and y'all have heard me tell the first part of this story before, but I think it's necessary because there are things coming up, and when I'm speaking to different people in my personal life, you know, I'm finding that that maybe you're not listening, maybe you're not understanding that this journey that I'm on, and I'm just trying to lead by example. I'm trying to lead in a way that you can say, okay, Prez did it, so I know it's possible. I know if he did it, if he's humbling himself, if he's put, getting out there and he's putting in the work, I could do it. And maybe my life is going to make a difference. So I told y'all the story about how, you know, all I ever wanted to do was get in that music industry. That is it. I wanted to get in the music industry like most people. Y'all got your dreams. You got your goals. You got your desires. Some of y'all want to start apparel businesses. Others of y'all are doing other things. You're trying to get into real estate. My thing when I was young, I wanted to be in the music industry. And truth be told, I put it all on the line. Like I put everything on the line just to get an opportunity. And I didn't say I put it all on the line to get a check. I put it all on the line just to get in the front door. And as many of you guys know, before I ever knocked on the doors of Bad Boy Entertainment, I took four internships before Bad Boy, four of them. Over the course of five years, nothing came out of it. And when Bad Boy presented itself, just help, like, let me help to paint the picture for you. My girl is pregnant at the time. I got to go home and tell her, look. I want to take another internship. You have watched me take internship after internship after internship and nothing's come out of it. But it's this upstart label. Bad Boy Puff is the hottest thing in town. I, I, I see it. I feel it. I think that if I took this internship, this is what I've been working for my whole life. So as I go in and I have that conversation and month over month, her stomach is growing and I go in and I take this internship for free, mind you. Actually, it was $40 a week when they decided to pay us. But I'm working for peanuts. Every day, I literally got to hop the train. Every day, I got to pack lunch from home because I don't know if they're going to pay me at the end of the week. Every day was a complete struggle on my end. And that was just to get the opportunity. I put it all on the line for that. It was no guarantees. It was nothing that I knew could come out of it. And finally, when they did say, you know what, Sean? We're going to give you a check. But the check is not going to be where you want it to be. The check is not going to be in A&R. You ain't going to be signing artists. You're not going to be working with producers. You're not going to be working with writers. You got to get on the street team. Being on the street team for me was one of the most disrespectful and, and slap in my face. Do you understand? I just worked for a year for free for y'all, for free. And finally, when I when y'all see that I or, or, or deem me as worthy to get a paycheck, you want to put me on the street team? But truth of the matter is, this is what I asked for. This is what I wanted. And I had to go in there and own it. I had to say to myself, you know what, Sean? It ain't where you want to be, but you're finally in the door. Just own it. Own this moment. Own everything about it. And when I changed my mindset to say, right here, right where I stand, I am going to be great where I'm at. I didn't wait to get to where in my head I wanted to go. I said I was going to be great where I'm at. And that's when I started to lift the game to another level. That's when I started to take that street team, those undesirable people who were on the other side of the office, who nobody wanted to communicate with, who nobody wanted to have dealings with. We was never allowed in the big staff rooms, sitting at the tables, at the meetings. We had no say so in bad boy whatsoever. But me deciding that I was going to be great where I'm at, getting on the street team, working my way up from the streets into the office. That is what got me on the, the radar of Diddy. That is what got me on the radar of Phil Robinson who said, you're great in promotion. Let me put you in management. That is what changed my life and got me from an intern to VP. I decided and made a decision where I am at, 
I am going to go balls to the wall and I'm going to be great right where I stand. And for some of y'all, for some of y'all out there, you are saying to yourself, I'm hungry. I know what it is that I want to do with my life. But right now, the job that I'm doing, is not the one that I want. It's not the job that I desire. So I'm going to give it a half-ass effort. I'm not going to be consistent. I'm not going to do all of the things right here where I'm at and make this name for myself. But what you don't understand is your name precedes you. People, it doesn't matter that you're not in the job that you want to be. Gil, go at it full force. Give it 100% every single day of the week because people respect the grind. People respect those who come in early, leave late, those who don't take no for an answer. But so many of us sit and we jump job to job, position to position, and we're saying to ourselves, I am going to go hard when. I'm going to get busy when. I'm going to be consistent and do my thing when I finally get to that job of my dream. And it doesn't work like that because if you go hard exactly where you're at, that's where you're going to get on the radar of the people who are out there who can hire you and can say, I don't care what you're doing right now. You need to come work with me. You need to be part of my team. But you got to make it a point to say right now, right where I'm at, I'm going to be great. One of my favorite movies, y'all, of all time is Rocky Three, And I was watching it earlier today. Actually, I was watching it over the weekend. And what I love so much about that movie is Rocky Three is the story of when Rocky, you know, he, he was top of the charts. He was heavyweight champion of the world. And when he was chilling, he's eating lobster. He's on the cover of magazines. It was this dude named Mr. T. And Mr. T was like Mike Tyson long before Mike Tyson. And he was coming up in the ranks and he was gunning laser focus for that title. And when he finally, finally got a chance at the title, Mickey, who was on um, Rocky's trainer, sat Rocky down and said, you can't beat this guy. I don't even want you in the ring with this guy. This guy will knock you into tomorrow. And Rocky said, why? Why would you ever say that to me? I am at the top of the mountain. And he said, Rocky, the thing that happened to you is the one thing that should never happen to any fighter. You got civilized. You got civilized. And some of y'all right now where you sit, you are civilized long before you even get success. Right now, you're respecting the rules to the game and you're civilized thinking that, Okay, right now I can chill. Right now I can give a half-ass effort. Right now I don't have to work at peak performance because I'm going to do that when I get to the top. And it does not work like that. It don't work like that. You got to understand right this second when somebody sends you out there to get a job done, you can't come back and say, I didn't get the job done because they didn't return my email. Where's the blood? You can't say, you know what, I'm working, waiting on a call back. Where's the sweat? You can't sit there and tell somebody, look, I'm, I'm waiting and, and I don't want to blow their phone up because I know that they're busy. Where's the tears? When are you going to give it everything and don't worry about what they think? Because what you don't understand is when you go hard and when you push the envelope and when you don't take no for an answer, they don't look at you like a bugaboo. They don't look at you like an annoyance. They don't look at you like a pain in my leg. They look at you as I have got to just give this person what they need because I know they will never, ever stop. They're going to come knock on my door. They're going to send me emails at 3 in the morning. They're going to ring my phone at 9 a.m., they're never going to stop. So if I want them off my back, I just better do what they need. So while you're sitting there and you're civilized, while you're sitting there and you're trying to have respect for somebody who's in a position that you already, that you want to be in, they're already there, but you want to be there. There's somebody else. There's a Mr. T out there. There's a young Mike Tyson out there who's barbaric. There's somebody out there who is straight up a savage and they ain't just hungry. They're famished. They're starving. 
their ribs are touching. And they're like, I don't care. They take me back to the old bad boy days where it was get it done and apologize in the morning. Because what you don't understand is when the job gets done. That is when your name starts to lift. That is when people start. You, you, you don't have to worry about getting on their radar. You don't have to worry about, oh, let me hand them a business card or let me introduce my. They're going to seek you out. When you start to do things and start to be uncommon amongst the uncommon, then people are going to say, I need him or I need her on my team. I sit here week over week and I pour into y'all and I give it to y'all straight. I give it to y'all as raw as I can give it to y'all because there's no shortcuts to success. There ain't no shortcuts to success. I want y'all to think of success like a, a, a immovable object. It's a wall. It cannot be moved. There's rules on the streets that you got to play by. There's rules in the office that you got to play by. When you're trying to get success, you got to play by the rules of success. So if success between, if there's a barrier between you and success, which is that immovable object, you got to be that unstoppable force. You got to be that force that no matter what, I don't care how many times I don't return this person's call. I don't care how many times I don't return this pe person's email. I don't care how many times I disregard this person. They are going to keep coming. They're going to keep coming. They're never, ever going to stop. They, are, they have worn me out. That is the only way you're going to get past that immovable object. That's the only way you're going to achieve what it is you're trying to achieve. Please, where you're at right now, the second, be great. Right now, the second. I speak often, and I'm very, very open about what's going on in my life and with my mother. Let me just help y'all to understand. Over the last 12 months, just 12 months, one year, my mother has been diagnosed with cancer had a mastectomy, went through several rounds of chemo, went through several rounds of radiation, on dialysis, told that she has a heart problem, and if she did not get emergency surgery, she was going to die. Went through heart surgery one, went through heart surgery two, and still came through all of it. But that's not the part of the story I need y'all to understand because some of y'all think, I'm putting, you know, I put in more sacrifice than somebody else. I'm working harder than somebody else. Okay, think that. As my mother was going through that, bedridden, couldn't get out of bed, my mother would share with me, you know what, Sean? I want to have a cooking show one day. I sit and I watch these people because my mother's the best cook in the family. And she often talking about, I want to have my own cooking show one day. Okay, ma. While you sitting in that bed and you can't move and you sick to death, what have you done today? What have you done today to get you closer to that dream that you say you have? And just like I come at y'all, just like I look at myself in the mirror, I hold her accountable. Ma, I don't care what happened. Every day you better be hitting me with something new you learned. So if you're going to send an email and need to attach a picture, you figure that out. You better not be asking my nieces and nephews to do it for you. If you, my mother has always worked cleaning somebody else's home, worked as a caregiver, worked inside of, of, of these places taking care of people. She never was behind a computer. Ma, you're sitting there. You got nothing to do with your life. You better learn how to get on that computer, shop on Amazon, go on Google, go to these different websites. But that is what it takes. And if she can learn at 72 years old and not rely on the fact that, yo, I am half dead. Yes, she can get it. She couldn't get out of the bed, but her brain still worked. Her fingers still worked. So if she can do it, y'all damn sure can do it. But you got to be great right where you're at. Right this moment, please make a decision as movers. You can't look at the competition and say, you know what? They got it better than me. They, they, they have more resources than I have. They are living in a place that is a bigger city than I'm living in. None of that stuff means anything. You have to be great where you're at. And that's a decision you have to make.